Condensed milk is a sweet and creamy ingredient made by evaporating water from milk and adding large amounts of sugar. Its delicious flavor makes desserts even tastier. But how is condensed milk made from cow's milk? In this video, we'll discover the untold story of milk. Condensed milk was originally developed by American inventor Gail Borden in 1856. His invention solved the problem of preserving milk before refrigeration, allowing it to be stored in cans for at least a year. This product was especially valuable during the U.S. Civil War, providing soldiers with a source of milk on battlefields where there were no dairy cows. The Army used it because of its long shelf life and high nutritional value, making it ideal for feeding the troops. Condensed milk production begins on dairy farms. Most milk comes from the 60,000 dairy farms in the United States, where over 9 million cows are raised to produce milk. For the past century, the milking machine has been an essential tool. The part of the machine that attaches to the cow's teat is called a cup, and it works much like a hand, applying pressure to the udder to extract milk. A farmer can hand milk about 6 cows per hour, but with a milking machine, that number increases to 100. This clever device improved production, but the way farmers care for cows also affects milk quality. The better cows are treated, the longer they live and the more milk they produce. On this farm, there are 7,500 cows. It is one of many farms that use technology to improve cow welfare and increase production. Up to 80 cows can be milked at once on rotary milking parlors, where the process is carried out twice a day. Dairy cows are creatures of habit and prefer daily routines, which makes milking easier. These parlors are 30% more efficient than standard machines. Workers prepare the cows by cleaning their teats with an iodine solution before attaching the cups. The process mimics the natural sucking of a calf, extracting milk in a natural way. It lasts about 7 minutes, and once the cow is milked, the cups detach automatically. Each cow spends around 8 hours a day eating 45 kilos of food and drinking 300 liters of water, allowing her to produce up to 38 liters of milk a day, 7 days a week. Today, cows are 3 times more productive than 50 years ago, thanks in part to technology and in part to better nutrition. A dairy cow begins to produce milk at 2 years of age after giving birth to her first calf. Generally, the calf is separated from its mother one hour after birth to prevent harmful bacteria from entering the mother's udder. From then on, the calf is bottle-fed with its mother's milk, while the cow begins her career as a milk producer. Cows are milked at least twice daily for 305 consecutive days before taking a 60-day rest to give birth again. After calving, the milking cycle restarts. The milk they produce is a nutrient-rich liquid made up of 87% water. This process begins when the food they eat is digested and broken down into nutrients that enter their bloodstream. These nutrients are carried to the mammary glands, where they are transformed into milk. The milk is extracted from the udder at a temperature of 32 degrees Celsius and pumped into refrigerated storage tanks kept between 2 and 3 degrees Celsius. At this stage, the milk is raw and may contain harmful bacteria, so it is transferred to a 20,000-liter tanker truck and transported to the dairy plant. Processing plants like Nestle's in California operate 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, and can process more than 1.6 million liters of milk per day. But how is the milk produced by thousands of farms turned into condensed milk? Tankers arrive constantly, bringing 567 liters of milk daily from nearby farms. Much of the milk has been collected only six hours earlier, so it is very fresh. Still, all incoming milk is tested in the laboratory before being accepted. Its fat and salt content must meet plant standards, and it must be free of antibiotics, since some people are allergic to them. After quality control, the new batch goes to the city of silos. 12 massive storage silos rise like futuristic buildings, together holding 2.8 million liters of milk, enough to produce 20 million cans of condensed milk. But the milk still contains too much fat, 
so it goes through a centrifugal separator, which handles more than 22,000 liters per hour. Conical discs spin at an astonishing 7,000 revolutions per minute. This centrifugal force pushes the heavier skim milk outward, while the lighter cream flows to the center. The cream now contains about 20% fat, while the skim milk has less than 10%. Skim milk is the base used to make condensed milk. Next, the milk must be pasteurized to kill bacteria. First cooled to about 3 degrees Celsius, it is then sent to a heat exchanger that raises its temperature to 72 degrees Celsius. Once heated, it passes through a holding tube where it is kept for 15.5 seconds, reaching the standard pasteurization level. Then it is cooled again to 3 degrees Celsius. The entire pasteurization process lasts less than 40 seconds and eliminates 99% of bacteria. Before this method, most milk was consumed raw, spoiling quickly and exposing people to dangerous microorganisms. In 1862, French scientist Louis Pasteur found this solution, originally to prevent wine spoilage, later applied to milk. Once pasteurized, large amounts of sugar are added. Sugar not only sweetens but also acts as a preservative, helping extend the product's shelf life. The milk and sugar mixture is heated again to fully dissolve the sugar and ensure even distribution. The heat also prevents crystallization, which would affect the smooth texture of condensed milk. Then the milk is sent to an evaporator, a large machine designed to remove water from milk. During this process, the milk is concentrated by reducing its water content by about 60%. The evaporator uses heat and pressure to evaporate the water without damaging the milk's properties, concentrating proteins, sugars, and fats. This is what gives condensed milk its thick consistency and sweet taste. The evaporator is made up of several towers called calandrias, each containing stainless steel tubes where milk flows down while surrounded by steam. As the milk descends, it is heated by the steam, causing the water to evaporate. Once the milk reaches the right concentration, it is extracted from the evaporator. Then it undergoes homogenization, a process where fat is broken down into tiny, uniform particles to improve texture and stability. Before being packaged, containers must be sterilized to eliminate any microorganisms. The processed condensed milk is transferred to filling machines that measure the exact amount into each container, ensuring consistency and avoiding waste. Once filled, the cans are sealed airtight to prevent contamination. To guarantee safety, the sealed cans are sterilized again in autoclaves, where pressurized steam destroys any remaining microorganisms. This treatment ensures the condensed milk is completely safe for consumption and has a long shelf life. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and share it with someone who might be interested. Also, subscribe to this channel and activate notifications to keep learning.